earlier this year, I found this, which was quite special to me because ever since I was a little boy, I dreamed of owning a black metal box. Now, the story with this is, on my birthday, 50 years prior to the actual day of my birth, the Everston family in Chicago was visited by Mr. Bauman, the friendly Electrolux man, who sold them their vacuum cleaner. And it remained in their family until I bought it earlier this year. 84 dollars was the retail price of the model 30 at that time which today would be the equivalent of about 1600 dollars and fortunately i paid less than 1600 and in fact less than 84. a 10 dollar deposit was was put down the balance of 76.52 was in monthly payments six dollars a month but you got a $6 discount if you paid the whole thing off within 30 days. And according to this little slip of paper here, they did just that. Actually, they were, they were a day late, but they got the discount anyway. Paid in full, September 27th, 1938. And in 1946, so when this vacuum was eight years old, they bought a new hose and a filter. $7.24 worth of parts to keep their vacuum going. At some point, I guess they were visited by the Filter Queen rep. And it appears they did not buy a Filter Queen. Maybe they did. But in any case, they stuck the brochure in the box with the Electrolux. And of course we have the manual. With all its, all its detail and beautiful drawings. How to use every part. Here's the owner's hand-drawn instructions about how to clean the dust buildup out of the hose by using the exhaust and putting the hose out the window. And here inside the, the box we have a very decrepit looking power cord but one that is different from your typical Electrolux cord, which would have been a black Bakelite affair. But it looks old enough that it could be original. And it appears that this owner would have documented if they had purchased a replacement cord, just like they did when they bought a replacement hose. Funny enough though, this looks like it could well be the original hose too. Yeah, it would be, because the replacement hoses by post-war, they would have had a suction control. I believe. We have Juan's. Three. Now, you really only got two with your vacuum cleaner when you bought it. In the original Juan's, they will say Electrolux on them. So that's an original... And that is an original. And this one is an imposter.
or brush stamped and chrome plated not cast the elbows cast but the body of the floor brush is not that's one design change that they made from the earlier ones to the later ones rug tool my favorite shape very elegant looking and functional this had the flip over design to concentrate the airflow and the gleaner which you could turn off and on crevice tool pressed fiberboard dusting brush some very petrified bristles but it looks quite unused doesn't it normally when you find an Electrolux that's been used for decades and decades these will be worn down to little nubs because they've vacuumed everything in the house with it but this looks unused the bumper's gone and this is another tool that on later ones was cast and polished aluminum and on this one it is stamped steel chrome plated might be nickel plated i'm not sure but it's plated upholstery tool mother for when mom just won't leave the sprayer probably was not used lots of the little gadgets that came with vacuums sold door-to-door of various brands lots of this stuff just didn't ever get used and it's interesting to see on different machines what got used and what didn't I just saw a, uh, a box of attachments for an Electrolux 1205 all unused so the wands the floor and rug tool the dusting combination tool and the uh, crevice tool had never been used, which means somebody bought that vacuum and only ever used the power nozzle. It's like buying a pickup truck and never hauling anything around with it. What's the point? Beautiful. Yep, likely unused. And uh, the Electrolux sprayer did not have a mechanical valve. You just... Uh, Put your finger over the hole to get it to spray. Simple and functional design. And we have the, ooh, this would be the suction control. So before the hose came with a suction control right on the handle, the little ring that you turn, it was a separate attachment that you would attach you couldn't put this at the top of a wand because the little stem is not long enough. So this would have to go at the tool and then either the wand or the handle would go into it. And by adjusting this collar, you could open and close the vents inside the little slots, which you can make out there and reduce the suction for delicate cleaning. And in wonderful Electrolux fashion, the slots remain covered even when they're open. Nice little detail. Quite a hard to find piece. And now we have the machine itself. I'm not trusting that rubber handle. It's a good way to break it. If you use it to pick up the weight of the vacuum after so many years, yeah, that's that's kind of petrified. So there she is. And the number one thing to me that sticks out visually, how you can tell a pre-war versus a post-war, is the detail where the trim piece goes into the back of the machine. 
that's far from the only difference, but if you look at this compared to a post-war one over there, you can see they are different. And the post-war machine, that is a late post-war machine over there, and it has its accoutrement with it. Um, but that's the one that everybody points to and says, oh, Grandma had that. That is like the iconic Electrolux. They sold millions of them, that model. And there were changes along the way, but the ones made before Electrolux stopped making vacuums uh, during, the, during the war looked like this. And they introduced it in 37. The 37 models, the really early ones, were darker up here. And they had two extra vents there and there for the exhaust. But that reduced the amount of exhaust uh, that you could take advantage of with the hose for blowing. So they got rid of those. I see we're missing a, missing a louver here. That's too bad. Uh, I do have another pre-war Model 30, and we know that this one was sold in late August of 38, and it is serial number M47557K, and this one is an H228. 75N. So there's a gap of 25,000 in the in the numbers and then the letters are different. A couple other differences that I noted are the power cord that came with this one is more like the cord that would come with a later model 30. Black Belden heavy very good quality. This cord remains supple and, and flexible like a quality rubber cord should if it hasn't been stored in an attic. And here's a Model 12, the predecessor to the Model 30. And this one has the same cord material, the same plug, just in brown. And then there's this thing, which is very brittle. It's more a plastic material than rubber. And, uh, the plug's been replaced on it. The machine end plug is this very smooth, nice design molded into the cord itself. So it's a nice power cord. I, I wonder if this was an early aftermarket replacement. If something happened to the original cord and it was replaced early enough with this, that this one had enough time to become petrified or if Electrolux was uh, sourcing their cords from somebody besides Belden for a short time. I mean you'd, you'd think that if they had bought a new cord it would have been from Electrolux and it would be on the in the paperwork somewhere. But uh, the tools I notice on this machine, the crevice tool, and these came with the vacuum when I received it. Crevice tool is this uh, same fiberboard material, but it is black. And the floor brush, this one has its bumper intact, though it's barely hanging on. The floor brush is a cast aluminum, which would have been polished out, as opposed to stamped plated steel. Inside the vacuum, I've already got the back cover off of this one. The motor mount is a Bakelite ring. Similar to how the Model 12 motor mount is constructed. And on this one, we'll take the back off and expose the filter. It has a metal ring. Similar to the later Model 30 motor mount. <laughs> Clearly this saw some moisture. I'll have to have to clean it up. But you can see that motor mount is uh, is metal. 
rubber cushion still, but uh, made of metal, not bakelite. Yeah. So, even though I find all the Model 30s very beautiful, and uh, the post-war ones, you could you could get the uh, um, accessories with like this attachment carrier and the cord winder, which looks quite a bit like a a Continental kit on a car. I like that makes it look longer and sleeker. And but if you bought the base Model 30 without these things. Well, then it just looked like that. And uh, you can see the, well, let's put the, let's put the filter back in and then we'll put them side by side. One thing I've always wondered, maybe somebody can tell me, I mean, these vacuums were made after the invention of the wheel, so the choice to use runners instead of wheels must have been a conscious, like, why do you guys have runners instead of wheels? Filtex has wheels. Oh, well, we use runners because of this. I mean, what was the, what was the, the reasoning for that? But here with pre-war on the left and post-war on the right, you can see the differences more clearly. And the post-war one had quite a few changes made to reduce the cost. And that was part of the reason they were able to sell millions and millions. It was still the, the best and it was still sold by your friendly Electrolux pusher that would show you how to use it and then he'd be available to service it. Also, part of the sales volume of the Model 30 was right place, right time. Post-World War II, there were millions of people setting up households that needed vacuum cleaners. And if you could afford it, you bought the best. It's a bit noisy moving these around with one hand on a concrete floor. So anyway, there's my there's my Model 30 story. And as always, I thank you for watching.